Okay, so in this last video, we're going to talk about other fields of biology and how they have actually helped us to figure out evolutionary relationships between organisms. So the first field is going to be something called homologous structures. So at this point, you probably know that the prefix homo means same. So these are going to literally translate to same structures. So they're going to be structures that might look a little bit different or might have a little bit of a different function, but they have some sort of common basic setup that suggests that they all come from a common ancestor. So I have a great slide to kind of show you what I mean by that. Sorry, there's a thunderstorm and my dogs are going crazy. They like to bark at thunder. Okay, so if you look at this, you've got a human's arm, a cat's leg, a whale's flipper, and a bat's wing. And if you look at the color-coded bones, they all have the same basic bones, right? So what this suggests is that these have recently shared a common ancestor. Whereas if I was going to put in that like insect with a wing, it wouldn't fit in here at all because it doesn't even have bones, right? So um, that's one way that you can suggest common ancestry. Now, the next field is going to be what's called developmental biology, which is also called embryology. And so what this is, is it's looking at organisms as they develop and looking at similarities to suggest common ancestry. So once again, going back to here, you can see here that this is going to be two vertebrates that are developing, a chicken and a human. And you can see there's a couple of similarities, right? You've got that backbone that's in there. You have that post-anal tail, um, pharyngeal slits. So all of these similar characteristics. So that says that these guys have shared a common ancestor relatively recently. Whereas if we were to compare these guys to a sea star developing, you can see that there's really not any sort of common anything between these, right? So it would kind of be the outlier, which means it's not as um, closely related to those guys. Okay, now moving on, we have vestigial structures. And vestigial structures are something I call the why the hell are they there structures. And what I mean by that is they're structures that have no function but probably did um, previously, right? So um, what can you think of that we have that we don't really need? Well, um, we've got our um, tailbone, we've got um, wisdom teeth, we've got um, our appendix. So those are going to be things that probably had a function earlier but don't anymore, right? Um, so if we go to my PowerPoint, got a couple of examples here. There we go. So you can see that we've got a tailbone, right? That's going to be an example of that. Um, also, snakes actually have the remnants of legs. So perhaps previously they did use them, and for some reason it wasn't advantageous to have them or something like that. Um, and whales have these crazy floating pelvic bones, right? So those are all structures that don't have any function now, but they could have in previous ancestors or something like that. So that's going to be vestigial structures. Um, then we've got the field called biogeography. And that's actually looking at continents when Pangaea used to be together and seeing how things used to fit together. Um, so get ready for our barking. Yes, there it is. How dare that thunder do that. OK, so if you look here, remember how South America used to fit into Africa, right, when Pangaea was together? And you can definitely see that there's a lot of similar species here. And so you could say that these all shared a common ancestor because they used to be all probably together. And then when they separated, they got exposed to different environmental hazards, right, or situations. And then um, the last one that we're going to talk about is called molecular homologies. And that's just looking at DNA. And obviously, this is the best way to do it. And so what this is is looking at actual sequences of DNA and seeing what percent similarity we have, right? So if we have like 98% similarity, those are pretty closely related individuals. Whereas if we have something that has like 56% similarity, then they're probably a little bit more distantly related. So that's obviously the best way, but if we're looking at fossils, a lot of times we don't have the luxury of finding DNA, um, or it's really expensive or difficult to extract. So that's going to be our first talk about evolution.